This video is sponsored by WISE. Click the link below for a fee-free transfer link of up to 500 pounds. If you're going on a trip and want to learn how to take out money without paying a fortune in ATM and foreign exchange fees, then you've come to the right place. Or maybe you want to know where the best credit and debit cards are for traveling abroad. <laughs> or maybe you're worried about safety and want to know ways to avoid scams and also keep your money safe. Or perhaps you want to learn some money-saving hacks like the one we use to save thousands on accommodations like this one. This one. We're Nicole and Miko, full-time travelers who have been on the road for three years visiting over 30 countries and we have learned a lot about money and travel. In this video, we're going to be spelling our best money secrets and also answer a lot of the questions that you sent in over on YouTube and Instagram. We've organized your questions into five categories so that you can easily follow along. But as they say, time is money, so let's get into it. By far, the question that we get asked the most when we talk about travel and money is what kind of debit and credit cards we're traveling with. So naturally, debit and credit cards has to be the first category. Yeah, you guys asked us the question, how many different cards do you keep when traveling? So that is gonna be the first thing that we answer. And we carry five different cards each, but four of them are really Redundant. Not necessary. Yeah, We've we really only use one of these yeah. cards. The first two cards are Visa cards. We carry a TD Visa Aeroplan, and that is just because this is the card we've had since we were teenagers, so we still have it. Feels weird <laughs> to leave home without it. It does. And then we have the Scotiabank Passport, and this is because there's low or no foreign exchange fees on this card, so this is a good card for traveling. And then we have the Emo MasterCard, the Ascend World Elite. Uh, we really have this because they have lounge passes on them and we really want to have a MasterCard with us. We have found that every once in a while, yeah. we'll kind of need to trade between Visa and MasterCard just for so random some, purchases. Something online doesn't like like our Visas, for yeah. example, and the MasterCards usually do better. We also carry around our debit card from our bank back home. Yeah. And we, we never use we it. Never use it. But it's here. And we never use it because of this one card. This pretty much replaces all the four cards that uh, we had earlier, and this is Wise. And it's a company that we're really excited to be partnering with yeah. for this video. I think we've mentioned that the sponsor of this video. And to be honest, I am so happy because we have been using this card religiously for the past year and mm -hmm. a half. And we absolutely love this card. Like it just does everything. It's really made everything else I, not necessary. <laughs> yeah, I think the first part of our travel we had all these cards and yeah. then we just replaced it with this one yeah. over the and past little we while. We should maybe not carry these, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, we probably, yeah, for safety reasons. So if you're not familiar with what WISE is, WISE is a global tech company that provides multi-currency debit cards. Mm -hmm. So it's not a credit card, everything is prepaid. Mm -hmm. But what this card allows us to do is it allows allows us to carry, I think, 40 different currencies from yeah. around the world. Yeah. So we've got US dollars in here, we've got Canadian dollars in here. Yeah, we've got Aussie dollars, we've got Euros, Philippines pesos. Yeah. Malaysian ringgits. We've got so much stuff in here. <laughs> this little card holds all those currencies yeah. and it's been really helpful for us as we travel to different countries yeah. around the world. It also enables us to access some of the best exchange rates mm -hmm. um, possible when we use this card. Yeah, and we'll tell you guys so much about them as the video goes on because there's like we just use this in so many different ways. Um, but we truly are in love with this guy. So this is the fifth card that we carry. So one question we got asked quite a lot is, are you loyal to any points or rewards companies? So as Canadians, we don't have the huge gamut of options for like travel reward points that Americans are with their credit cards. So we do collect points on the three credit cards that we shared with you guys, the BMO, the Scotiabank, and the, the TD Aeroplan. We used to have like a huge stockpile of Aeroplan points, but we yeah. quickly used a lot of them for some of the bigger trans-ocean flights. Yeah. In the beginning of our journey. Yeah. Um, but now we don't have a ton, but we mostly use just the uh, BMO points yeah. and the Scotiabank, Scotiabank points. scene points. I will also say though, before we left to travel full time, we did work hard to collect points. Like we did the whole like getting credit cards to get like those big bonuses. Like I remember we got that. Yeah. What was it, the Amex Platinum? Like you got like 100,000 points if yeah. you spent X dollars in the first six months. And we did do that and that has been a great help. Um, but now that we're on the road and we pay most things in like cash or using our debit, we don't collect a lot of credit card points. So it's not as useful now. What is your preferred credit card overall? In terms so, of actual credit cards. In terms of a credit card, so look, again, like we normally use our Wise card for everything, for everything and that's a debit card. In terms of a credit card, 
Um, I'd I say the Scotiabank the Passport. Scotiabank, yeah. yeah. And that's because there's uh, no foreign exchange fees. And there are some lounge passes that we get with it. So that's occasionally very helpful as well. Yeah. Also, really quickly, if you're not familiar with what kind of fees you're charged when you use your credit card abroad, normally there are two fees associated when you make a uh, payment. So let's say you are buying something, some food at a restaurant mm -hmm. abroad and it costs you 100 euros. So the first thing you're going to pay is the foreign exchange rate. So that whatever the 100 euros is converted into US dollars. Well, your home currency, that, isn't it? Yeah, or your home currency. Yeah, your home currency. That's basically the first chunk of your payment and the rate can fluctuate depending on what the bank what wants to use. Mm -hmm. And then the second part of your payment is usually a small 1 to 3% fee that basically is just like thanks for using our card, we're going to give you, you know, we're going to charge you 1 to 3%. For the because, convenience. Because for the convenience of transacting between those two different currencies. Mm -hmm. So those are the two kind of main forms of uh, transactions that take place when you use your card. Mm -hmm. And our Scotiabank card uh, just uses uh, that first one. It doesn't charge us a foreign exchange fee. That doesn't charge us that 1 to 3%. Yeah. However, I will say that sometimes banks do build in an extra little amount on that foreign exchange rate. So it kind of covers that second fee. <laughs> so you don't really kind of see it. They say no foreign exchange fees, but then you're kind of like, uh, what they mean is they've built it into the exchange rate. <laughs> exactly. So that's why we, we like using wise because wise has a very consistent mid, like uses a very consistent mid market exchange mm -hmm. rate. And they also tell us very clearly what fees we're going to be paying in yeah. addition to that. All right, now let's talk about ATMs and exchange fees. And this category is really about how do we get money out while we're abroad? So the first question we've got is how do you use ATMs and how do you get the lowest fees while you're traveling? Firstly, we do use ATMs. I know, um, I think when we first started traveling, it's a little bit of a scary thing to like go to a foreign country yeah. and like use a- Take cash a, out. Take cash out of yeah. a machine that's like not in our language at all. We've done it lots of times in our travels and had never really had any issues. Um, we normally just try to stick to ATMs that are in like more official places. Yeah. So like avoiding those like standalone ATMs in the middle of like a beach or something or yeah. be behind a bar. Like Yeah, we, we often will use ATMs actually at banks. We'll yeah. go into the bank and use their ATM. Those are usually like the safer, safer options yeah. if you want to use an ATM. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we were really concerned when we left that we'd get a lot of ATMs that were like in the local language, but mm -hmm. almost mm -hmm. almost every time an ATM takes our card, it recognizes it's a foreign card and it gives us all the information in English. There have been a handful of times where we've needed mm -hmm. to select English as a language, but that comes up on the screen and it's like, what language do you want? I'm, and it's usually very obvious that, that the word English is written in English. I guess the other thing I'll mention about an ATM, I guess, I was talking about using it, is that sometimes when you use your card, you put your debit card in there or your, your wise card, like we normally do, um, the ATM might ask you if you want to exchange or if you want to use the, what is it, like a local It asks currency? you, do you want, like, do you want the ATM to charge you in local currency? So mm -hmm. that means like it's charging your bank in whatever, let's say you're in Philippines pesos. Or it's like, or do you want us to convert the amount to your home currency? So let's say for us, that's Canadian dollars. And it'll tell the bank, oh, we charge them 300 Canadian dollars. Um, you don't want to do that. Yeah. You always have the ATM charge you in the local currency. Yeah, usually it's always, you decline the conversion. Decline the conversion. Uh, they, they say it in a number of different ways, but you always decline the conversion. Yes, and the reason for that is because you don't want the ATM to set the exchange rate for the local currency to your home currency. You want your bank to do that because you're always going to get a better rate with your bank. And then the way that ATMs work is there's two fees typically when you use an ATM, right? So if you're using an ATM, you're gonna be charged by that ATM for the transaction. And so we, and that'll, that'll change based on what ATM you're using, what bank it's with. So we usually do a bit of research when we land in a country to just see like what are the best um, ATMs to use with foreign cards. Tons of blogs have that. Like yeah. you search best bank to use ATMs in Mexico mm -hmm. or best banks to use in Thailand. Mm -hmm. They'll, some, someone always has like, a, here's my top banks that has the yeah. lowest fees. Lowest fees. And so that way you can know because they will be wildly different. Like one yeah. bank might charge you like the equivalent of two or three dollars and another ATM or bank down the street will charge you like 10 or $15. Which is just like mind blowing to like take out, let's say a hundred dollars and getting charged $15 on top of and that. fees, just, uh, just from the ATM. So the uh, second fee that is, you have to keep in mind when you're using an ATM is that your bank might be charging you a fee. So when you go to use your debit card, uh, depending on your accounts, you could be charged a couple of dollars for removing money uh, in a foreign country. Uh, that is one of the reasons again, that we love WISE because 
through the when you use your wise debit card i'm editing this video right now and in this next part of the video i just do such a bad job of explaining that i'm going to come in here and correct myself so what i'm trying to say in the next bit is that with wise we get two free withdrawals per month at atms up to a certain dollar amount and then beyond that dollar amount we pay a small fee for withdrawing money at foreign atms and that small fee is less than our bank back home so we always prefer to use the wise card um i also don't think we've mentioned this video yet and want to say to you guys now that if you are looking to sign up for wise it is actually free to sign up for account and you can get a debit card for free when you do sign up so just so you guys know and we can now get back to the video how do you get the best exchange rates so typically the best exchange rates are going to be with your bank now obviously for us when we take out money from an atm we are always using our wise debit card because these guys actually give us better rates than our bank does yeah so the wise card uses what they call the mid-market rate which is basically the the fairest exchange rate mm -hmm. universally like accepted day to day between all the different currencies yeah and wise uses the the rate that's closest to that mid-market rate or is at the mid-market rate. Whereas banks and other um, exchange platforms, mm -hmm. they'll they'll use the mid-market rate plus maybe a little bit extra. Usually for a fee and things like that. And yeah. It's often quite hidden. So you're not for sure what you're gonna pay yeah. when you go to actually make that payment. Whereas again with Wise, we have found that just we can see exactly what rate we are gonna be charged when we go to take out money. Do you use foreign exchange kiosks? Mm, no. no. Like Almost never. Never. never <laughs> I can yeah. count for sure on one hand how many times I, we have in the last few years. You know, I've never really like I really don't really trust them. And then when when you actually do okay, I'm sure they're not all bad, but you know, when <laughs> no. you actually like look at the numbers that they have on yeah. the screen, how much they're converting. Um, and when you compare that against like the mid-market rate or what your bank char charges for the rate, yeah. it's never better. No, it's never better. And yeah. they're actually getting harder to find. Like you can still find them at airports and like train stations, things like that. Touristy places. Yeah, but they're definitely more hard to find than they were even say 10 years ago. Um, so they're not as reliable either. And of course yeah. you then have to have the cash to be converting. So it means yeah. you have to have like, let's say you want US dollars. Um, that means you have to have a bunch of US dollars on you and we don't love to carry around a lot of cash. We try not to do that. So yeah. Uh, we hardly ever use the, the kiosks. The only thing I'll, I'll say is that if you are using them, um, you know, just be aware of times when they say, you know, no commission yeah. or like no foreign exchange fees or extra fees. Yeah. Because normally all those things are just built into the that rate. Yeah. Um, like we talked about earlier. Yeah. So they'll say, oh yeah, zero dollars commission, whatever. We'll give you like, um, a fair exchange, but really their exchange rate, it's when you actually compare it to the mid market or your bank, it's, it's gonna be good. worse. On to the next category, which is handling cash. So the first question here is how much money do we travel with? We don't travel with a lot of money at any one time, not, like a lot of cash. Not a lot. We try, We actively try to avoid it. Uh, generally, we take out $350 Canadian, typically in one go or around maybe 270 US is probably the conversion there. Yeah. And, and, and that's really so that if we get robbed, we're not losing a ton of money. Or you lose your wallet. Or we lose our money. Yeah, our wallet. <laughs> Just so you know, we've never been robbed. That's never happened <laughs> so, in all these years. But we're so cautious about it. Yeah, so, you know, that's so good for us in it. case that it does happen. Yeah, our mentality is like, what would we be comfortable losing? And yeah. like, if we lost $300, it's not going to be the end of the world. It would suck. Yeah. But we're not like, unable to travel if we lose 300 bucks, so that'll be fine. Yeah, and even with that money that we take out, like let's say the $300, we won't actually be carrying all that money up like on us when we're no. when we're doing like a day trip or we're going to the beach or whatever yeah we'll probably carry maybe like 50 like 50 dollars worth of the local currency Each. or a hundred dollars maybe not even a hundred dollars but usually it's just like just enough to cover food and transportation for that day it depends what we're doing obviously yeah. right so we'll just take a judgment call if we're going to the beach we take maybe $50 each, yeah. like truly not a lot. Um, if we're going for something that we know will be more expensive and we don't expect to be able to use our debit card yeah. for payment for those things, we'll bring a bit more cash with us. The rest of it just stays at home, in our bags, in our, usually it's like in our passport wallet. If we have a safe, we can use that. Um, but because we stay in Airbnbs mostly, we don't get a lot of safes. No. Um, so we just keep it safe somewhere at home uh, the rest of the money. How much cash do you withdraw before a trip? Well, for us, because we're actually always on the road full-time traveling, we go yeah. country to country yeah. uh, technically zero, zero because we always uh once like our part of our arriving in a new country ritual is we go to the atm and take out cash at the airport immediately but i would recommend um if you are going on like a holiday holiday yeah maybe like enough for like three days three of spending th i would say so too yeah yeah like assuming your accommodation is paid for and the reality is most countries you go to you can use your, your 
credit card for purchases if you want to, yeah. um, or your debit card for purchases if you want to. So you don't often have to pull no, out cash. So no. you, don't, you don't usually maybe, need a ton. Maybe like maximum a week, but like, yeah, you don't generally want to mm. like be leaving home with like thousands of dollars yeah. in cash. Is it better to carry more cash for convenience rather than go to a currency exchange every few days? So we would say no currency exchange. <laughs> yeah, no currency exchange. So I would exchange. replace that question with rather than go to an ATM every few days, because yeah. we would always do an ATM instead. Generally we're paying, like we're going to the ATM like maybe once every week or? Week or 10 days. Something like that, And yeah. we don't go a lot. <laughs> yeah. All right, the next category is all about saving money. So the first question is, what's your best advice for saving money on, the, on accommodation? We save so much money on accommodation. Yeah. That with this it, little hack, I think I it's love probably it. added up to like probably thousands of dollars. Thousands of dollars, 100%. Yeah. It's at least at it, least a few thousand dollars. We prefer Airbnb because we like to have cooking space, we like to have living space, and we find that- Maybe longer term as well. Yeah, we usually like at least one week if we can, if not much longer. To do that though, Airbnb's fees are pretty notorious for being fairly expensive. They, they're, they, I think they started off pretty low, but like nowadays it just seems so Brutal. high. Just with the taxes and the cleaning fee, and then like- the service, air, fee. service fee. It's and all that. It's a lot. Yeah. So what we've, we started to do, when we started to travel actually, is we still book on Airbnb. We go on Airbnb, we find all the places we like, and then we'll book a place for, let's say, three days or a week. Yeah. And once we're there, assuming that they have availability beyond our stay, which we've been lucky, normally they do, then if we want to stay a bit longer, we just communicate directly with the host. We cut out Airbnb at this point. And we say, hey, we want to extend our stay, but we want to do that off of Airbnb. Do you have a rate if we book directly with you? And yeah. always, they say, yeah. We do. <laughs> yeah, it's, and it's usually way cheaper. Way, way, way better pricing. So they cut out all of the service fees through Airbnb and they will often on top of that even reduce the base price of the place we're staying. So right now this cabin kind of style place uh, is usually about $81 a night yeah. on Airbnb. Like mm -hmm. when you include all the service charge and cleaning and all that yeah. stuff. Um, but with the host just chatting with him and paying directly to him, uh, we pay about forty-five dollars a night. So we're saving so, like thirty-six bucks a night. Yeah, by it's like almost here. almost half. Yes. The risk here is that we now have like no Airbnb helping us if anything goes yeah. awry, and that is why we still like to book that first few days or week with Airbnb, um, because then we have those protections from Airbnb. If we get yeah. here and it's like total garbage or the cleaning's terrible or the host doesn't show up or whatever, we still have that protection. But once we feel good with the host, we just. We just, it's, we just get rid of Airbnb. Yeah, and something really key in making this kind of plan work because obviously we're dealing with like hundreds of dollars mm -hmm. for uh, long stays in these places is uh, using our Wise Card and the feature with the international money transfer. Yeah. So with the Wise Card, it allows you to actually pay somebody abroad mm -hmm. directly to their bank. Mm -hmm. So we don't ever have to like take out a bunch thousand, of money. You know, eight hundred dollars or a thousand dollars worth of cash to give somebody. Yeah, uh, we've done it in the past before. We don't really Bef feel good about it because before we had wise, that's what we were doing. Yeah. we'd be like, okay, we'll go take like eight hundred dollars cash in the local currency. Yeah, just wad of money, and, and there's a ton of ATM fees because you've had to do like four transactions yeah. at the ATM, and then you have to meet somebody and hand them all this cash. But yeah. now with our once we, since we got our wise card, we're able to just like go online, type in their banking information. Yeah, we, yeah, we just ask the host, like give us your bank details mm -hmm. and we can like transfer you the money. And it arrives in seconds. Yeah. So we're paying people immediately. It's wonderful. The fees for that we have found so far to be really low. Like recently, mm -hmm. uh, you paid for this Airbnb actually through Wise, we, we transferred somebody the money and I think our fees were like just over four bucks. Just, yeah, maybe just over four dollars. Canadian? Over, yeah, over like, Seven hundred dollars or six hundred dollars. Yeah, hundreds of dollars for the for the stay. So being able to just directly like wire money to somebody mm -hmm. abroad um, has been amazing. So convenient. I'll also add that down in the description below, we have a link for a fee-free transfer of up to five hundred dollars on your first transfer. Five hundred pounds. Five hundred pounds. Yes, with, with Wise. With Wise. <laughs> so if you decide to use Wise and you want to send somebody money abroad to their bank account, mm -hmm. uh, you can just uh, get rid of all the fees up to using up to five hundred dollars. Pounds. <laughs> five hundred pounds <laughs> using our link. So check out the link in the description below. <laughs> <laughs> Do you track your spending, uh, and if so, how? So yes, we use an app that we love. It's called Travel Spend. Mm -hmm. um, we have been using them for like four years since before we went on this trip, and yeah. they've gotten better and better and better as the years have gone on. 
Um, so yeah, check out Travel Spend if you're looking to travel and keep track of the expenses on the go. What is the comfortable amount of saving money for travel of two years? That's really hard <laughs> to answer because you like... Really depends where you go and what you do. Really depends. I you know, two years in Southeast Asia is not the same as two years in Europe. No, that's yeah. for sure. Um, so. I honestly, I would actually probably just reference people to like our budget for one year. Like we did a whole video on how much money we spent for our first year of full-time travel. And in that first year we went to like, I don't know, a dozen countries maybe, something yeah. like that. Um, it's all in the video. And I think we spent like 36,000 US for the two of us. I'm pretty sure it's in the video. Yeah. Um, so your answer is probably there. We'll link it above. We haven't made a video for like the subsequent years. So, um, I know if you guys are interested, let us know. And if there's enough interest, we'll do it. We're not yeah. sure there is, but if there's enough interest, we could do that. We do yeah. track all, like every dollar that we spend, we track. So yeah. we could make another video. Let us know. So a lot of people online asked us, how are we paying for our travels now and today? And that honestly wasn't the intention of this video. Yeah. It wasn't really supposed to be like, how are we making money to travel video? And, but because we had so many questions about it, we do want to address it a little bit. So. Yeah. The a question we got specifically, how are you paying for your travels now? Uh, we are working. <laughs> We're making this video. We are running our YouTube channel uh, and we make money through our YouTube channel and everything associated with it. So when you have a YouTube channel, there's multiple streams of revenue. There has to be. <laughs> well, yeah, usually your ad revenue from YouTube and then like everything else kind of spins off of yeah. like having a presence online. Yeah, so, so we have a lot of affiliate income that comes from various different places so many places uh, obviously sponsorships is a good one as well yeah, yeah. and um those are actually really the only yeah, thing. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> multiple income streams we have we do have channel memberships um so if you're interested in becoming a channel member we have channel memberships yeah, that true. brings us the money i guess that's that all kind of kind of funneled through yeah. youtube um so that's those are really the streams um, um so yeah we are working and we're getting paid to work and then we're living off of that to travel and continue to create travel content. All right, we are gonna now talk about safety and money scams. Dum, dum, dum. Dun, dun, dun. So, I love this question. Have your cards ever been compromised? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> This is actually one of the main reasons that we really wanted to get the WISE card because it's separate from our bank accounts. Like we really wanted to try and draw a very firm line between our bank account in Canada and the money that we spend abroad because between the two of us in the last couple of years, I think we have been compromised three different times on our two. credit cards. Yeah. yeah. At one point know, okay. in Bolivia, Miko's credit card got charged for like all these Uber gift cards and yeah, we had to yeah. cancel the card and, and have them resend cards to us in Peru, it was terrible. And so all of those times that we've had compromises happen, we're pretty sure they were from online purchases. So um, we'll tell you guys actually about another service that we love from WISE. This is again, one of the main reasons we chose to get this card. So basically <laughs> what WISE can do is create a virtual card that has its own set of numbers that are different than your physical your cards real card. and it has its own set of expiry dates and everything it's all still real and you can use it online but if it's ever compromised you can just kill that card yeah it just, it's, it's, it's not like connected a, to your main guy at all your physical card at yeah all. i like to think of it as like a burner it's like card. a burner card yeah, yeah. It's exactly what it is so like if we get like a we go to a website it's like kind of sketchy we want to book a bus ticket yeah. or a plane ticket but we're like i don't want to put in my like real card details, yeah. I'll just use this digital card. It's so nice. And then if it gets like compromised, if someone steals it, or if that wasn't like a real website or yeah. something like that, yeah. um, our details are safe. Like our real yeah. cards are fine and we're not having to get reissued physical cards, which is so annoying. Do we use hidden wallets and money belts? No, I kind of feel like if you have a money belt, if I see somebody with a money belt, I'm like, that person has something to hide. Oh, <laughs> I'm like, they're new to travel and I can definitely take advantage <laughs> yeah, of them. Yeah, that's true. Is I, that bad? Maybe I, that's bad, I'm we sorry. Just, honestly, we just use like a regular yes. wallet. And, yeah, I have yeah. this little guy. It's like this tiny little, like it just holds a couple of cards and some cash in the middle. That's all I carry on the day to day. Yeah, and I have like a wallet that is just normal. Like I just want to look as normal as possible yeah. wherever we're traveling. Yes, honestly, because all we ever carry in here is like the Wise card, which is like acts as our debit card, yeah. and we can use it at like all payment points. And just a nice pizza business card from a pizza place. <laughs> and some cash. <laughs> and then all the other cards that we have that we don't bring with us on the day to day live in our pack safe wallets. Yeah. So if you've seen our packing video before, you might have seen this already. This is our passport wallets. We love these guys. So yeah, you have, uh, it holds your passport, it holds stuff for your cards, yeah. IDs, and like it's got a really, a lot of really nice features. We've been traveling with this 
since the beginning yeah, and exactly. absolutely loved it. The most important thing is like, is we really treat this as like a holy grail. Yeah. So this like, we protect We protect lives. everything because it has our <laughs> passport and credit cards and everything. And like, we always make sure this is in the safest spot. Um, wherever we go. So we don't we don't leave the house with this unless we're actually traveling to the yeah. next place. And then if we are like in transit and this is with us, it's always like in our day bags, as close to our bodies as yeah. possible. We know always that if honest. we go to the washroom, go to get coffee, anything, we're gonna bring this bag with this guy in it because we don't yeah. wanna lose our passport. And I would just add to this that the reason when we're out and about in the day, we only carry our WISE card with us is because this is a prepaid debit card. So if this ever got compromised or stolen or someone like, took us by knife point and said, take out all your money at the ATM, which unfortunately happens to travelers, has never happened to us. Yeah. This is prepaid, we so we don't put a ton of money on this at one yeah. time. So like, you know, the most someone's gonna be able to get out of this is like probably a thousand dollars, let's yeah. say. I think at most we put a thousand bucks in there. Yeah. So and yeah, so, you're right, that's a good point. Yeah, Somebody's so we're like, really careful about that. They, No one can steal too much money yeah, from us like, ever. <laughs> not, yeah, if they're like, give us all your money, it's like, well, that's all I got. It's I like, got a thousand bucks, you can have it, yeah. leave me here. You, we, we, <laughs> but that's you it. Physically can't get more. Yeah. And, but so. if we do need more, like, we can just add it. We can add it on our phone. Don't, tell, don't, don't tell, tell them, them that. that. Don't tell <laughs> them that. I feel like if somebody's watching this, they like know all our secrets, like where our money is. Like, I'm, like, I'm gonna have to change my tactic. Uh, yeah, how? Yeah. We cheap. should. I don't know if we've said that. So with the Wise Card, I don't. I don't know if we've explained that. Yeah. Um, the way you reload money is just through the app. It, it takes seconds once you've connected like your bank account. Yeah. Um, so yeah, don't tell the thieves that we could just reload more money onto the Wise Card if they hold us at knife point to the ATM. But we could, I guess, technically do that. Yeah. All right, money scams. So we get the question: What are the most common money scams that you come? across first and foremost a money scam we come across all the time is being given the wrong change for stuff that's so common oh, yeah. right. and I think it's because a lot of places will take advantage of the fact that you don't know their currency well so it's easy to be like oh I'm sure they gave me the right cat the right change I don't really know this currency what am I supposed to get back and it's kind of hard to do the math sometimes yeah. yeah you always gotta like just make sure counting that change in yeah. front of them before you walk away before you walk don't, away and don't mix that you know the change that they give you don't mix that into your wallet make yes. sure you no. I can think of like, we heard about this happening in, uh, in India. It happened like yeah, it was so exactly funny. what we saw online. It, it was like, yeah, online they, they said that like, when you arrive in India, like in the New Delhi airport and you go get a SIM card, mm -hmm. the people there that are buy, selling SIM cards are notorious for giving you bad change. Yep. So just watch out for that. What happens when we arrive in sure India? Sure enough. Exactly that. So like, I remember thinking about it. The guy gives me the cash. I kind of like thumb through it and like, uh, it's a little bit off and he's like, <laughs> He's like, oh, oh, sorry, oh, oh, gives yeah, us yeah. the money. Right like, away. Oh, yeah. I'm like, ah, oh, sure. This yeah. has honestly happened to us all over the world. Also, being charged the wrong amount at pay points. I oh, remember yeah. That's... the first time this happened to us was in Georgia. And I'm we're at like a convenience store. And I go to use my uh, card to pay for something. And it was in the local currency, right? So I'm like trying to do the math, but we'd only just got to Georgia. So I use the card and pay for this stuff. And then we leave and I'm, I literally just, we were walking out the door and I'm thinking, I'm doing the math. I'm like, that seems so expensive. And sure enough, I checked the conversion on my phone and I'm like, that was so wrong. So I went back and asked him and he had like, double and triple scanned a bunch of stuff and tried to way overcharge us. Yeah, so that is definitely something to be aware yeah. of. Um, since that happened, we got our WISE card and I will say, an awesome thing that the WISE card does is every single time we use the card, yeah. you immediately get a message on your phone that says, like from WISE, that says you used, and it tells you the amount in the local currency and it tells you what that cost you in whatever currency you paid with. So I love that because yeah. Yeah. for those instances where totally it's yeah. hard to see, like sometimes people will like make like, like taxi drivers, like sometimes They're cab, notorious. they like give you the machine to like put your card in, but then you don't see like how much money you're it's paying. It's already like, past the page that says like, this is the right amount. This is the yeah they put they've like past that. they put like the numbers <laughs> in, they click past it, and they just like here all you have to do is add your card. Yeah, and so um, you're like okay, I want to trust you and not be rude, but yeah. like what? So the nice thing is if you go to actually use your Wise card and pay. For for that you'll immediately get a notification that yeah. says this is and what you were charged and it's like instant like the moment instant. it's used it's like 10 seconds later yeah not even it, it says that like you've used this amount so you don't even have to be like we don't even have to leave the You're taxi and the i cap. know that i paid exactly what i'm supposed to be paying yes i know we have talked about wise a lot in this video you guys we actually just absolutely love this service and we're super stoked to be working with them if you are interested in trying out wise for yourself feel free to use the link down in the description below if you do use that link 
you will get that, I think what Mika talked about earlier, that fee-free transfer of up to 500 pounds the first time that you use it. Um, and yeah, honestly, we would just really highly recommend them. So we hope you guys have loved this video and gotten a lot out of it. If there are any other topics about money or I guess other travel-related topics that you want to see us cover in a different video, feel free to leave that in the comments and maybe we'll do that. See you in the next one. Thanks for watching. And debit cards are for traveling abroad. <laughs> maybe you're worried about safety and want to know ways to keep you. <laughs> Where to go? <laughs> no, I'm standing on it. So let's get into it. <laughs> let's get into it. I sound like I'm gonna like start a fitness channel. <laughs> yeah, baby. Oh my gosh. Oh my God. <laughs> Being a YouTuber, man. It's the weirdest job in the world. <laughs>